The biggest scrub of the year. Ready? Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, let's, let's watch this. Okay, so real quick. He caught his foot peg a little bit, which is horrifying because if, and I know that didn't do it justice, but hitting that jump, there was a, a plateau, like a lip mm -hmm. after it yeah. where the Red Bull sign was. I would have been afraid scrubbing it that hard that I would have then hit the Red Bull sign. Are you like, so, sorry, keep going. Well, what were you going to ask? I was, are, are you like thinking of doing that when you're coming up to it or do you just do it? Oh, interesting. So, no, in a race situation like that, he probably decided to scrub that hard. Like when he landed, he probably landed the jump before it just right and was just far enough behind Barsha to where he got that urge in his stomach to just be like, oh, well, we're sending this thing. Because I, back when I was young, I would often scrub by guys. Often. I remember at English Town, they used to have this big floater tabletop in the back. I would take off after guys and land before them all the time. And it just takes that little bit of extra effort. So when, when you scrub, obviously you're hitting the jump faster than what you would to hit it normally. That's step one. Step two, and I've been teaching this lately and I never really thought about this until lately, you scrub off throttle. A scrub, I think almost always, always is off throttle, meaning you have to come in so fast that you let off the throttle for that last last little bit. When you get so effective, dude, so sick. <laughs> uh, that's what I get for teaching class in 30 degree weather. When you get really good at scrubbing, then the fear is catching your inside foot. Twice when I was on 85s, once was mini O's, another one was at uh, Hurricane Hills or Pleasure Valley or Frozen Ocean, Frozen Ocean, wherever the heck that track is, New York, Pennsylvania, somewhere, it was horrible. On 85, scrubbed so hard that my foot peg caught and on a small bike like that, you don't have enough power to push you through it. It just would throw you into an endo and tsunami like Superman yourself. So I crashed twice in a year. I think within a year I crashed twice doing that. And ever since I've been scared. But what you'll notice is if you replay that, and if you, uh, you know who's really good at it is Chase Sexton. When you watch Chase Sexton do a scrub, he frequently catches his inside foot peg on the jump face, but they keep their foot so tight that it doesn't affect them. And being on fast bikes, they're able, and they're approaching with so much speed, they're able to not like have it kill all of their forward momentum. But to do it on a jump, and for anybody that wasn't there, that tabletop was huge. It was insane. It was actually insane. Huge. The biggest jump I've ever hit at a race event in my life. And I know it started like people were starting to hit it so casually that once you watched it on TV, it probably didn't look as spectacular. But this is a good gauge of it. What the 125s had to practice first. The guys in the 125 class all were very high level dudes. It took seven or eight passes until anybody jumped it. That never happens. Usually second lap at Supercross, everything's been jumped. At most three laps, maybe four laps. And especially this just being a casual tabletop. It wasn't like it was a quad and a rhythm section or anything super technical. It was just so big that nobody wanted to jump it. And you couldn't see. So when you're going off the face, I'm talking, you're just staring at the Red Bull sign and the sky. When you landed on top, you would land on the wood and ride on the wood for a while. And then, I don't know why they did this, the landing had a huge dirt knuckle. Yeah, that was which was the That was the scariest part. And holy cow, it was also spaced just far enough away from the jump before it and just too close to the jump after it that it was like, oh my God, I'm not only afraid to case this thing because I'm gonna land on this knuckle and kill myself, but if I jump this down to the bottom, I'm in the face of that next on off. And you fell and like you, 60 feet. Holy crap, but it was so, I wish I had a bike that didn't bog because I would have loved to, I could have sessioned that jump all day long. The feeling was like hitting a freestyle jump, like 120 foot when the ramps, uh, I think standard freestyle length is 75. 
Is it 60? 60 or 70, 75? I want to say 75. When you hit a 120 ramp to dirt, which I've only done one day, the feeling you get in your stomach is like nothing else. It doesn't feel, it feels like you're on a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. Very unusual feeling. That's what that tabletop felt like. It looked fun once you guys were doing it, but it, oh, I mean, guys, when you got up there, if you stood at the top of that thing, you're like, oh, this is big. Because not only are you 40 feet in the air, but it's, it was big. I don't know what it was and lip to lip, but it was huge. It was all, what would you guess distance wise? At least like 200. 135. It, I mean, <laughs> it's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say 80. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But it felt like you're going equally as high right. as you were far. That was what was unusual about it. And that that's what was so fun about it as well. Um, Did it work like, you know how freestyle jumps you've said, it, uh, like you can hit them yes. as fast as you want. And you just go higher. You don't go further. Yes, yeah, sort of, sort of, to a certain extent. And that was like, once you learned how to hit it, that's what made us all feel pretty confident in it, in that you could go wicked fast and you were still going to catch that landing somewhere. Yeah. So many noises, dude. Yeah. Yeah, but that that jump was insane. And for rocks to throw a scrub, I mean, he made up two bike lengths. Oh. Just, just there. And it wasn't just a scrub. Like, that was a scrub of all scrubs. That was That was, that was bubble level, for sure. Yeah, you can't you can't humanly scrub any harder than that on a jump that is that big. No, you could. I couldn't believe no, that you, even happened. No, I can't. Even, if you guys could have seen how steep that lip was, it didn't look oh. scrubbable. Scrubbable. No, <laughs> I know. Like wow, wild. Yeah, wild. That it, it was just a fun jump, but for straight rhythm is just fun. Period. I, I'm glad though because the last one for the Pastrana one and the year before when I did the Stewart tribute which was what, 17, 18 or 18, 19. Neither of those years had any jumps that were that fun or big. Yeah. So hopefully moving forward, straight rhythm, Jason Baker, build something like that because that was awesome. Come on, dude. Who was that? Don't call me. Driver Jamie. Aw. Everybody, everybody on my team knows not to call me unless they set it up. Well, I call you. It's you just don't answer. So. Oh, right. Um, yeah, imagine, I never answer a call unless it's set up. Imagine... Uh, Okay, so there's one thing, and I want to hear your opinion about this, because I didn't ride the track, but from a viewer standpoint, there was one thing okay. I would change about the track. Okay. I would take out the double before the finish line and after the whoops. It seemed more exciting when it went whoops to finish line. Uh, agreed. Agreed. I personally would make the whoops that long. Oh, wow. Just like forever? Forever. And bigger. That was my only disappointment is that the whoops were in it. It wouldn't have mattered because my bike was bogging. I would have made it halfway through and not gone any further. But w they should make the whoops a little bigger and they should make maybe like five more of them. And then right into a big finish line, like make the finish line giant. You want guys to be able to throw huge whips or something like that. Those two jumps, especially in the 250 class, were very tiny. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you'd make the jumps, the whoops bigger though, because it's pretty exciting to see you know, that one Hail Mary where the dude's just looks like he's in a straightaway. He's going so fast. Yeah. And but when they're slightly, a bit. when they're slightly bigger though, the Hail Mary would look more drastic because he'd probably catch the next guy even more. So, right. I think, I think these ones were so easy that everybody was going so fast that even when somebody did Hail Mary it, there wasn't much time to be made or lost. Yeah. Where in fact, even last time they did straight rhythm, those whoops were, bigger really and you saw more passes where like guys were getting kind of blown out of the water in the whoops yeah they weren't massive they weren't like sometimes where you see them at supercross and you're like what are these things but they were definitely these ones had like there was like five setup whoops didn't you notice that there was five whoops at the beginning that were so laid over and so flat that it actually for me it made it harder to like figure out where i was normally mm. you have one setup whoop and then you're right into the big ones yeah I don't know. I just feel like that double between the whoops and the finish line, like just killed it. Cause like mm. it was the finish line, that double. Cause it was not right. like you were going to pass anybody after that was the finish line. So that was, kind although of, who did somebody got passed there? Yeah. I don't know who he must've been a loser though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are enjoying these podcast clips and you want to watch full episodes, you can subscribe at club.themotoacademy.com.